Hello everybody, it's Amel, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve the design a circular cube problem. Design your implementation of the circular cube. The circular cube is a linear data structure in which the operations are performed based on FIFO, first in, first out principle, and the last position is connected back to the first position to make a circle. It is also called ring buffer. One of the benefits of the circular cube is that we can make use of the spaces in front of the cube. In a normal queue, once the queue becomes full, we cannot insert the next element even if there is a space in front of the queue. But using the circular queue, we can use the space to store new values. Your implementation should support the following operations. My circular queue k. Constructor, set the size of the queue to be k. Front, get the front item from the queue. If the queue is empty, return negative 1. Rear, get the last item from the queue. If the queue is empty, return a grief 1. And queue value, insert an element into a circular queue, return true if the operation is successful. The queue, delete an element from the circular queue, return true if the operation is successful. Is empty, checks whether the circular queue is empty or not. Is full, checks whether the circular queue is full or not. And here they give you an example. So you instantiate my circular queue to have a size of 3. So now you have circular Q that has size 3. Then U and Q1 returns true because it was enqueued successfully. And Q2 returns true and Q3 returns true. Then when you try to enqueue 4, it returns false because the Q is full. Because the size of the Q is 3 and you already have 3 elements there, you cannot enqueue anymore, so return false. Then circular Q that rear returns 3 because that's the rear of the queue. That's the last element that you inserted. Circular queue that is full returns true. You dequeue here returns true, and then you and Q4 returns true. And then when you see the rear, you, you get four. Circular queue that rear gives you back four. So they also give you this all values will be in the range 0 to 1000, the number of operations will be in the range 1 to 1000, and please do not use the built-in queue library. Alright, so as you know, the queue has the FIFO property, first in, first out. In this case, we have to design a queue that is circular. So, as you can see, in the circular queue, we have um, the last position connected back to the first position to make a circle. So how can we do this? Well, we have to use the modulo operator to achieve the connection back to the first position. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to write the code. First, I'm going to have up here my instance variable. So I'm going to have private array of integer data. This is a reference. Then I need private integer. I'm going to have the size of the queue because it has a fixed size. I'm going to have the number of elements in the queue. I'm going to call this count. I will also have the head of the queue and the tail. So in a queue, to maintain the FIFO property, we always enqueue or insert at the tail and with the queue from the head. So we will keep these two variables to, to indicate the, the beginning of the queue and the end of the queue. We insert at the end and we dequeue from the front. So then I will have in the constructor the size gets a value of k. I will also have to initialize data. Data gets a value of new array of integer of size k. And I also need to have head. I want head to be uh, at the last position in the in the array to make the connection. So I'm going to have head has a value of size minus one. So the head is pointing at the last position in the array. I also need the tail, and tail will be at the first position in the array. So whenever I insert an element, whenever I enqueue, I will enqueue 
at position tail and then I will increment tail and in order to see the head of the queue I will just add one to the head modulo the size and that will give me the head of the queue so now that I have the head and the tail I also want to initialize the count to be zero and this variable count as I said before will tell me how many elements I already have in my queue so now let's begin with a queue first we want to check if the queue is full if is full then I return false because I don't have any space left here so the operation is not successful I return false okay now as I said before I want to say data subtail gets a value or you assign the, this value here so you put the element a position tail and then you have to increment the tail so to increment the tail we say tail gets a value of tail plus one modulo the size and using the modulo operator modulo the size will allow us to wrap around when we get to the end of the array. When we get to the end of the array, we can start over by using modulo size. And then, because I have one more element, I increment the count, and this operation was successful, so I return true. So, now that I have this, I will tackle DQ. So, I will say if, is empty if the circular queue is empty then there's nothing to the queue so I return false the operation was not successful then whenever I want to dequeue I just want to move the head forward just discard this element so I will say head gets a value of head plus one modulo size of the of the queue okay so after that, I have one element less, so I will decrement the count, and the operation was successful. If I get down here, so I'll return true. So as you can see, the way that we dequeue an element is by moving head forward by one. And we have to use modulo size because since the queue is circular, we want to wrap around at the beginning. If we are at the end of the queue, we want to start over at the beginning. Okay, so now we're going to do the front of the queue. So this method here gets the front item from the queue. So to get the front item from the queue, what we need to do is, is use the head. So we check, return is empty. If the queue is empty, I cannot get the front item, there's nothing to get, so I return negative one. Otherwise, the queue is not empty. So I will just get data, the element in the data at position head plus one modulo the size. So as you can see, the element at the front is the element after the head index. So I do head plus one modulo the size, and if the head is at the end of the array, I do the modulo, because when I add one, it will be equal to the size, so size modulo size equals zero. So it will start at the beginning. Then I also have to find the rear, or the last element from the queue. So I will say return is empty. If the queue is empty, return negative one there's no rear. Otherwise return in the data the element a position tail minus one plus the size modulo the size. And here why do I have to say plus the size? I say plus the size because let's say the tail is zero then if I say 0 minus 1, I get minus 1. 
And if I don't have this, I say minus one modulo size will give me minus one. So I will have a negative index and that's a problem. So in order to fix that, I add the size here and that will solve the problem. So the rear of the circular queue is the element right before the tail. Because remember when we in Q, we put a position tail and then we increment the tail by one. So the tail is actually the element right before the tail. So the last element is the element right before the tail. So that's why here we say tail minus one modulo size. And to avoid negative index, we add the plus size after after we do the subtraction here. So now, in order to check if the queue is empty, we just need to check that the count is zero. So return count equals equals zero. And the queue is full, we just need to, re to check if the count equals equals the size of the queue, then the queue is full. Return count equals equals size. So I'm gonna run the program. All right, it seems to be working fine. I'm gonna submit a solution. All right, this is working perfectly. 44 milliseconds faster than 99.97% of Java submissions for design circular cube. So as you can see, these operations are very efficient. These operations take constant time and I'm only using a few extra variables here and the internal data structure to hold the data for the queue. So if you like this video, please press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.